Welcome back to AFTV everyone, time to preview Arsenal versus Sheffield United, Arsenal back at home for the first time since beating Manchester City here, it was a massive game, they've since played Chelsea away from home, rescued a draw despite a really poor performance really, but they showed some fight at the end and then went to Sevilla and got a really big win in the Champions League group, Turkish and Cecil here to look ahead to it, Turkish. This is the lowest, let, let's go through facts, four people in yeah. the comments go, stop disrespecting Sheffield United, I'm just giving you the facts. One draw, eight defeats in their nine games. They've had a real struggle this season, mm -hmm. Sheffield United. This should be one of those games that we do feel confident going into, but we've supported this club a very long time. <laughs> God, how are you feeling going into it? Yeah, we've supported this club a hell of a long time. But, uh, but listen, recent history will tell mm. you that we should be dispatching on Sheffield United with relative ease. Mm -hmm. And I look at our performance against Sevilla and I called it our, our best performance mm. of the season. And a lot of people wanted to argue back about that. The reason I called it our best performance is maybe it wasn't the most controlled as it was at Everton away, but it was the most exciting for me. Yeah. From from defence to attack, we was quick in the transition. We was fluid. I'm going to keep on using that word till I start seeing it regularly yeah. and it becomes a part of the furniture. Um, and, and we was exciting. There was something about us. We was a threat, you know, pretty much every time we moved into the final third. Yeah, I agree. I think that was a rare, that's been a rarity all season. So I expect to take that into this game we're home against the poorest side so far this season in the premier league yeah let's yeah. be honest if not the poorest joint poorest side in the in the season so far yeah and that is true that is those are the facts let's try though and offer some sort of look as to why maybe arsenal fans are certain listen think of the arsenal fans the arsenal players shouldn't have any complacency going in a because it's football and things happen but let's look at last season. I remember doing a preview here outside the Emirates saying Bournemouth at home, they're struggling mm -hmm. in, the in, in, in the relegation battle. This was before they really pulled away. Arsenal, you know, were in great form. I think we had seven wins on the bounce or we were on that run. And it took a Reese Nelson 97th minute winner to go and get it over the line. And then we really struggled in that game to, even though we were kind of come to the half creating chances, we eventually got over the line with the last kick. You know, that can happen. If it yeah, was. it definitely can happen, James. And, and I'm not... I'm not the one, listen, I know everyone's pretty confident because like you said, Sheffield, they haven't, haven't, haven't won all season and we're going into this game unbeaten in the league. So, you know, it's like two, two, two different ends of the spectrum and people will be confident off the back of that and think, you know, Arsenal should be able to easily be, be comfortable in this win. But like you just mentioned there, Bournemouth here, the last minute by Reese Nelson, no one really saw that coming, them getting an early goal and us having to really scrape by to get a win. I've seen Arsenal play Southampton. <laughs> Everyone have had a terrible season, but haven't been able to pick up a win against them. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not, and knowing me, when I get too confident as well, <laughs> Arsenal would love to just say, that nah, assess mate. <laughs> We're yeah. going to throw something in the, in the works here that's going to upset you. So listen, it's the Premier League. It's the, it's the, it's the best, com best league in, in the world. and It is competitive. Obviously, the favourites will be Arsenal, but I am keeping my wits about me. Um, yeah, I just, I just know the room has got better in Arsenal's play, Turkey. So what you mentioned there, the fluidness, it has got better in that last game. But I saw at Chelsea away, no, no fluidity, no, no rhythm. So I'm hoping off the back of what we saw in the Champions League, they come back here and we see that sharp, fast Arsenal. I'm, I do not want to see an early goal from Sheffield United and have to go through those emotions again at Bournemouth. Even though it ended right, I don't want to go through that again, especially well, against that sort of team. We have had some weird times against Sheffield United. To remind everyone, two years ago, and we think Lacazette was on the score sheet, you know, a 3-0 win away from home. I think that was during the lockdown, lockdown football. wasn't it? Yeah. Um, we did beat them 2-1 here as well. Kai Saka, I think, got his first Premier League goal. No, it wouldn't have been his first Premier League goal. Maybe his first goal to the Emirates or something in that game. The year before that, though, we lost 1-0 away mm, from home. Pepe did. missed that big yeah. chance, remember that. Uh, we even drew 1-1. Mikel Arteta, one of his early home games, I think we went 1-0 up before they pulled one back. So we've had sticky moments. I even remember, I think it was Phil Jagielka going in goal away from home and we lost in a 1-0 defeat. This was oh, yeah, way yeah, back in 2006 yeah. 7 I think. So, while those Sheffield United teams might have been going through different times to this one, I mean, listen, one draw and eight defeats is a really, it's a really poor run. We've, we've had a weird history with them, certainly a weird recent history. Yeah, we have, but, you know, we've had a poor history against certain teams recently, but we've managed to turn around a lot of that in the last two years. That's, history is what you make it on the day, and, and, and on the day it means nothing. 
uh, I, I expect Arsenal to to come here, show up, and, and improve our goal difference. Do you, do you know what is? Yeah, do you know what is? Uh, again, you don't underestimate any opposition, but I actually think it's very unacceptable that if we lose our unbeaten win streak in the league to Sheffield United, I think that is definitely a cause for concern. Even a draw, though. Even well, yeah, yeah, a draw, 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 draw will be, be, will, be, will, be yeah. will make us feel very down. But I'm saying losing an unbeaten streak in the league to Sheffield United by losing to them would be would be absolutely unacceptable. So I think, you know, I think the boys as well off the back at Champions League are going to be very confident in going into this, knowing they need to get the job done. Um, I don't know how, listen, they've got Aust Austin Trusty at the back, so he'll be he'll be coming oh, yeah. to the Emirates as well. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, him, him return here. But I know, not I've never been at the bottom of the league, uh, at a bottom of the league club, but I know they're going to be looking at this game as their big game, their chance to impress, their chance to, to sh I don't want to say shock the league because you know, they haven't won a game yet and they're likely to go down. No offence to any of the Sheffield United fans, but um, they're going to be really up for this. Well, well, they have been for the other three of the yeah, traditional United game big was close six. as well. Man United, they worked them hard. I thought we were looking yeah, the better yeah. team at yeah, times in that game. Um, Tottenham took a 97th and then 100th minute you know, set of Turn goals around. to actually beat them 2-1. Man City will work hard. I remember in that game, City, total control, lots of chances. And then when Sheffield United got to that final 20, 25 minutes and thought, well, look, we're losing. We've got to find something. They were creating chances. They were forcing Man City into error. So whatever it is about them, they've got some quality. We know the likes of Cameron Archer. We'll talk about some of the players, Ollie McBurney. There are players there that can do things, but also they're clearly a very spirited group when it comes to facing, again, the traditional big six in inverted quote marks. And, yeah. and you know, Arsenal should take note of that. Can I, can I ask a question just to, to, to us two here, um, just briefly? Just so if you normally get the feeling that Chelsea got it spot on, you said if, if, if Arteta goes with what I believe um, should be the start level, you win, but if not, you might be looking at around a 2 2 draw. This game, come the weekend, Regardless of if Arteta decides to do something, yeah. Ramsdale up front, you know how he moves, he does like something crazy, some, some foolishness, and gives, well, or gives players opportunities. Regardless of that, do you expect Arsenal to win this game, regardless of who, who starts in whatever position? Because I, I don't know, he might rotate in this. this might, you might see a different Arsenal side. I, because I expect, I expect the low block, it's going to be tough to break them down, but I expect once we break them down, we should be able to open them up a few more times. That's been my, yeah. my frustration this season, that... Mm. I understand wanting to control the game more and kind of choking the life out of an opponent, but it feels like once we get a goal, we don't really flip the switch to try and get the the, the next goal swiftly enough yeah, or I try agree. and keep that momentum and pressure up. Again, Sheffield United, I expect to break them down. I expect to get a goal, albeit it might be a difficult game. It might be one of those ones where it's a 2-0, 3-0. I expect the clean sheet. But whatever else Arteta decides to pick, I expect four years into the process, with the amount of money spent, to be able to rotate and beat Sheffield United at home. Whether it happens or not, or whether there's history that tells you that it, 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 it's not the case, that's all good and well. I agree with that too. But mm. fourth year of the process, all the money spent, you can rotate a little bit. If you take away all the history, the context, which I think does play a factor in football to a degree, but when you just go 11 for 11, for 11 and the form they're in with, you know, what's going out there that can actually have a legitimate, tangible effect on the result, mm -hmm. I agree. It should be somewhat comfortable. But like I said, Two goals for Spurs very late on. United with a worldie to win it. Man City, I think, with a very late goal to win against Sheffield United. They have shown Sheffield United don't think that you can just rock up and score five. Now, Arsenal are capable of that. But how do Arsenal approach this game? Because we've talked about the lack of fluidity. We've talked about while it was improving at Sevilla, there has been a move towards control and not conceding chance in transition. So how yeah. do Arsenal approach this from the sense of do you press from the front all over them, try and force them into errors, try and blitz teams like we did last season. I think I read a great stat from a guy called Scott Willis on, on Twitter was saying, last season we'd scored however many goals in the first 15 minutes by this point. I think maybe four or five goals were in the opening 15 minutes of games. This season we haven't scored any in the opening 15 mm -hmm. minutes. So there's no question that we are starting games slower and building our way into them. Yeah, there's two games that, that, that tell me otherwise, though, and I expect to start this mm. game the way we started those, and that is Tottenham at the Emirates and Sevilla away, where in the first 20 minutes, Odegaard was leading the press like yeah. a madman. Yeah, that's um, true. Trying to get something out of it, and, you know, I expect to do that against Sheffield United, because if there's any team or a set of teams, Sheffield United being sure, one of them, yeah. where a, 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 a fast start, pressing from the front, could bode well and get you something you know on the back end like a goal or a, mm -hmm. or a chance at the very least 
I think you go for it. And in those games, I also saw us 20, 25 minutes in regress a little bit, calm yeah. the press down and start trying to control it more. So I expect to go in with that sort of a approach. And I expect yeah. the first 20 minutes we get a goal because of that. Um, yeah, I, 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 there's a stat that um, we've scored the most amount of goals in the last 15 minutes of a game um, in the league. So we were the, we're the top of that. Um, don't want to get no late winners. And we also can see the least amount of, of goals as well in the league so far. So we, we should be able to do this comfortably. I think Arsenal, like Turk said, I think we go for it, in my opinion. I think we go strong um, and get the job done. Because the next game, we've got a cup game on the 1st of November, my birthday. Um, <laughs> we've got a cup game there, which I expect our, I expect our test to rotate in that because it's, it's the League Cup. So I expect it to be heavily rotated, which means Realistically, we can go strong in there, rest players for that cup game and then Newcastle away, which is a big game. So for me, and I'm not saying stay strong for the whole 90 minutes, I say start strong, get the get the job done, get a goal, start start quicker. I know you mentioned there, Turkish, before you said about, and I agree with this, we score and then one, we sit back or we score two and think we're Arsenal now, we, 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 we're going to roll over this team and go and score more. And then we kind of get complacent. I think you go and get those early goals first or second goal and then you rotate with players that want to prove themselves and earn their spot in the Premier League uh, in the first, sorry, first 11. Go bring them on, heavily rotate the side and then look and to rest players for the first November and then go win, win Newcastle as we well. We seem to show a better ruthlessness and discipline away from home. Like Bournemouth away 4-0, yeah. Brentford away last season 3-0, the Everton win at Goodison I thought was a great win and I think we've had a quietly underrated difficult start to the season. I think in your first nine to have played four of the big six, Chelsea away from home being one of them, gone to Goodison Park, going to Crystal Palace. I keep making this point, but because I think that's a, I'd call that an awkward at best kind of start to, you know, your nine games of the season. Mm. We've got now Sheffield United at home, but I kind of almost don't trust the team to have the same discipline here that they've been showing on the road. So let's hope they do. Yeah. On the injury front, um, I mean, look, we know Jiren Tim is still out for a while, so that will just keep being mentioned in all these previews till we get to at least February. We hope, obviously, we get him back as soon as possible. Tommy Asu's done fantastic as well. Oh, so we, there the will way. be a predicted 11 video. Look out for that on the channel. Everyone's going to give the 11s, Laura included, the 11 they want to see. And then I will predict what I think Arteta will go with. But muscle injury for Thomas Partey. We hope it's nothing serious. I haven't really heard much. They've been very quiet on the injury front. Jesus comes off, seemed like he's got a bit of a hamstring mm. issue, claps the fans, walks off, says in an interview that he thinks it's nothing. So I don't know how we're feeling about all this. Would you I, even I'm, risk I'm, Jesus? I'm, if he says, I'm 99%, you go, well, don't worry about it then. We'll see you next week. I mean, what would you do? No, nah, I don't risk him. You don't risk don't him at all? Nah, nah, don't at all, at all. For this. No, no, you don't need him for it. Relax, it's a muscle injury as well. You don't want to risk those. Yeah. It's not okay. like if it was an impact one and he's saying, I'm okay, fair enough, but a muscle injury. Yeah, if they to... scan, there's nothing there. And sometimes sometimes you him. can pull a muscle and go, as in, it's a strain, almost like a, whoa, any more? And that you could hurt yourself, but yeah. you're okay. Sometimes it can be nothing. Um, but we, yeah, even if he's we, slightly we off it. We kept Eddie and signed Havertz for a reason. If you can't play them in, the, in this sort of a game. What reason is that? Do you know the reason? Sheffield United at home. The funny thing is, <laughs> that's one game a season that way. <laughs> it was worth it then. Sorry, I should, should joke. But, for, all, um, for all that, I'd still start a so false nine. But anyway. Yeah, that's anyway. fair. But actually, um, that's not what I'm going to go with in my prediction. But, or is it? Actually, let, let's well, go. Well, for, I, 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 just, just, just quickly, quickly. Um, it's more away from who starts. I have to say, I'm getting tired of, if, if it is injuries to these players, Partey and Jesus, their injury record, it, it's starting to annoy oh, me as a go. fan. We're entering the... Yeah, uh, we are. Just sell them. Yeah. If they're not available, get rid of them. You know my avail availability argument. I'm not going to say sell them yet. Partey's under pressure because we have Rice in the side and I feel like now it's not a massive need that we have to have Thomas Partey, but his injury record is, is atrocious. It's, yeah. it's frustrating me as a fan. It's actually starting to get on my nerves a little bit and I understand his quality, but if you're a big club that we are, Arsenal, I think you've got to start looking at that and looking for the next option now. Def or an improvement on that because his injury records is terrible. And then Jay Zeus as well. I've mentioned in previous shows as well. His ones is just as bad. It's, it's, getting, it's, getting, it's starting to rack up and he offers so much and I love watching Jay Jesus play so much. But I'm, I'm saying now to everyone and how I feel, they're starting to become a concern. So if, if he's not available for the next, I don't know, this next run of November or whatnot, hopefully it, is only, it seems like it's only a soft one, he will be back and he can be rested on Saturday, but I am starting to question those two in particular, their injury record. Oh, well, look, hopefully, hopefully that. Yeah. I've seen Cesar on FIFA as well, so at this stage, he'll sell Jay just to bring in Edward from Palace because he likes Palace players for some reason. <laughs>
He's not wrong. Did you sign Edward from Palace? I like Palace players. I, just, I don't know what did, it is. Did you sign Edward? No, I didn't. Tariq he Mitchell. Mitchell. Yeah. But he's a good player, though. Do you understand? It? Thank oh, FIFA's it's you. Game, it's you. The... Like, like, in, like, come on, it's yeah. a game. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. It, is it a game signing no, Mitchell? Like, well, that's... He's good, man. Anyway, but so that's another conversation. Go check out the FIFA Twitch streams every Wednesday, live with these two bickering, I imagine, over who to sign. And I did walk in when you guys bottled it home to Nottingham Forest. Yeah. But we've come a long way since then. <laughs> yeah, we have, we actually. Fair enough. The team is growing. It's all Turkish right. in, that's all I know. On Cecil out. All right. Go check it out. Everyone, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. That was the preview. There is a predicted 11 coming out with the three of us and Laurie as well. Turkish, Cecil, and Laurie are going to give me the team they want to see, and then I will predict. Uh, I'm going to do a Robbie because he does this all the time when you're doing your outro. Score predictions. Sorry, I'm just. That's what if Robbie was here. I just know we're all going to predict them later on the starting eleven. Go on. Oh, I, I'm not. Might have been. I won't be on the starting eleven. But for me, four one. I Arsenal. said three one or forever. I think three 0 Okay, there okay. we go. Let me know your score predictions in the comments below. Check out the uh, predict eleven coming out shortly. Catch you in a bit.